Listen, I want to talk about the uh, extremism definition. Now, the government is strengthening its approach to counter-extremism with a new definition. It's quite short, so I'm just going to read it out to you. Extremism, according to the Department of Leveling Up Housing and Communities, the government essentially, extremism is the promotion or advancement of an ideology based on violence, hatred or intolerance that aims to, one, negate or destroy the fundamental rights and freedoms of others, or undermine, overturn or replace the UK system of liberal parliamentary democracy and democratic rights, or intentionally create a permissive environment for others to achieve, achieve those results, so the results of point one and point two. So, I mean, there's a lot in this. Um, hatred, what is hatred, of course? Fundamental rights and freedoms of others, what are those fundamental rights? We don't have a British Bill of Rights, although we're part of the European uh, Convention on Human Rights. Undermining liberal democracy, overturning liberal democracy, replacing liberal parliamentary democracy and democratic rights. Uh, what does that actually mean as well? So there are lots and lots of different voices on this, and we've heard from people who are the sort of cone-headed uh, sort of academics on it, but I wanted to hear from someone who's very intelligent, but not, not uh, someone who's an academic, someone who is, in fact, a former Isl Islamist extremist and who is now an extremism prevention educator. His name is Sahil Ahmed. We had him on a couple of weeks ago. And, Sahil, we had an incredible reaction to that interview. And I'm just really, really interested what you think uh, of this definition. Thanks for coming on again. And what do you think progress has been made here or are there issues? What do you make of it? Sure, thank you for having me on. Um... I would say that whilst I do have some concerns regarding the new definition, I am on the whole quite impressed with Michael Gove and this, this new definition, and there's a number of reasons for that. One of them is that it makes quite, in, in the kind of, that's the, the, what you read out was the, the definition itself, but that's not the whole guidance, there's actually a lot more. Yeah, there's a lot that's more, that's the, that's the basic yeah. stuff, yeah. Yeah, in, in the actual guidance, it makes reference to something known as Entryism. Now, that's to, to people not kind of involved in CT and counter extremism, they're very well aware what that means. That's referring to tadaruj. It's a term, an Arabic term, that it, it makes reference to an Islamist concept in which they attempt to, and it goes all the way back to the original grandfather Islamist organization, the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. They had this idea to get involved in the democratic process, but to have the end goal of removing democracy. Mm. So they, they, they went about trying to destroy democracy through democracy. And that's kind of entryism where you're, or gradualism, where you're basically um, trying to destroy or negate the values or the system by at least ostensibly from the outset initially, pretending to support them. Yes, so it, 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 it totally makes sense. Yes. And, and in your case, Sahil, that wasn't really what you were uh, involved with and, and of course have turned away from. And I should point out yes. again that Sahil has, has not broken the law in any way because if he had, uh, he certainly wouldn't mm. be in this programme. But Sahil, it's mm. interesting um, to that there is the Islamist extremism that you were previously and not, not currently of course, mm. involved with that was just about simply destroying democracy through violent acts. But actually, there is this entryism, there is this other idea, and you might yes. you might have politicians saying, "Well, isn't it great that there are people who are turning away from Islamism and turning towards democracy?" But actually, their motives may be a little more sinister and long term as well. Indeed, they use the very same principles, concepts, laws, uh, rights in order to attempt to destroy those very same rights that got them in that place in the first place. Yeah. And that's that has to be underscored. The other thing that was made reference to in, in the guidance was parallel legal structures, and that's literally the direct quote. Now, very obviously, that's kind of referring to things like Sharia courts. Sharia courts, right? yeah, and of course. I'm, I'm, I was kind of Unfortunately, through family, I was kind of aware of these courts and they had an influence on my family. So I've seen firsthand the, the deleterious and the, the drastically horrid impacts that they can have, uh, especially for women's rights, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, in general, it, it, it made very clear reference in the list that was provided. It made reference to far right organizations and also Islamist organizations, which, by the way, until now, all of us who are involved in CT and CVE, countering extremism and counterterrorism, we were very well aware who they were. We knew exactly what they were, but we couldn't say so too honestly and openly because of legal 
Yes, of course. Right? Yeah. But we all knew what they were mm. <laughs> and who they are. Um, and this definition is good in the sense that it allows us to now start kind of pointing out what's quite blatantly obvious to all of us. Uh, and it allows us to counter that that the, their ideologies. Now, I want to I want to ask you in a second, about, Sahil, about some of the concerns some people might have about it as well. But I just want to hear from Michael Gove first of all on the definition, on the extremism definition himself. We'll hear a couple of things from him. Let's hear the about extremism first. As a new definition makes clear, extremism can lead to the radicalization of individuals, deny people their full rights and opportunities, suppress freedom of expression, incite hatred, weaken social cohesion, and ultimately, it can lead to acts of terrorism. Most extremist materials and activities are not illegal and do not meet a terrorism or national security threshold. For example, Islamist and neo-Nazi groups in Britain are operating lawfully but they advocate and work towards the replacement of democracy with an Islamist or Nazi society. I also want to hear a little bit more from Michael Gove. He was in the House of Commons on Thursday talking about, the, about Islamists and the far right as well. This is what Michael Gove had to say on this particular topic. We've seen a terrible increase in anti-Semitic and anti-Muslim hate crime, as well as a very significant increase in radicalisation. Troublingly, there is also evidence that some Islamists and extreme right-wing groups and others who seek to tear our society apart are working together to maximise the reach of their message and cause. And that is why the work of civil society organisations such as the Community Security Trust and Tel Mama, as well as Muslims Against Antisemitism, the educational charity Solutions Not Sides and the Forum for Discussion of Israel and Palestine is so important. So, Hill, what do you make of the fact that Michael Gove said there in Parliament about Islamists and right-wing groups working together? Far-right, I mean. I don't mean right-wing groups. I mean far-right groups working course, together. That, that seems to be a pretty astonishing thing. Yes, it's um, interesting that he mentions Islamists and the far-right, but he also says, and others. It, reading the actual guidance, he makes re it, 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 it makes reference to those that support either by saying nothing, by giving them platforms, extremist platforms, and then say nothing and do not counter them or criticize them. To me, and this is my interpretation, it was very clearly referring to the extreme left. For example, the, the baying mobs outside parliament, for which we essentially overturned a part of our unwritten constitution when the Speaker of the House uh, decided to change parliamentary proceed procedure, as he, as he said, for security purposes. Uh, to give context, um, Labour wasn't supposed to have an amendment or a yep. vote on yep. on on the the the, the anti-Semitism side of things, but they allowed that to happen. So, in in your uh, view, I mean, you talk about the bang yeah. mob there. In your view, do you think Lindsay Hoyle gave in to the bang mob there? Yes, we gave in to them, unfortunately, uh, and that's and we 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 turned apart, we overturned a part of our unwritten constitution in the process. I cannot underscore the severity of that or the gravity of that enough. And these people, the far right, the far left, the, the uh, Islamists, they do work together. And the way in which they work together to tear our society apart is insidious and is in a way that most people, when they kind of look in from the outside, they don't notice it. But those of us who actually study them, understand them, and follow them, we fully understand exactly what they're up to. So you, you would imagine, you would imagine, I mean, tell us a little bit more about the far right, because this is something that often, I mean, I've already got a text in uh, here from someone saying, um, you know, please expand on far right, how many far right yes. attacks have there actually been in the last 10 years? You know, uh, do we, do we, essentially, Mark and Southampton said that, but I don't want to put words in his mouth, but there is certainly this thought that actually we sort of demonise the far right about 90%, as I understand it, could be wrong, but as I understand it, 90% of what MI5 does is actually about Islamists. It's not about uh, the far right, but the far right is, a, is an issue. So as someone who really understands and is now educating people uh, to uh, prevent extremism, just tell us a little bit more about the far right, because that is something that, that our viewers and listeners are interested in. When I refer to the far right, I always kind of preface that by saying the actual, real far right. I'm not talking about people that have issues with immigration. I'm not talking about people that voted for Brexit. Uh, and I say this as someone who's uh, from an immigrant family who voted for Remain. Um, voting for, be, having concerns, genuine concerns over immigration and voting for Brexit does not make you far right, does not make you an extremist. Similarly, as someone who supports trans rights, I don't think 
questioning the whole redefinition of gender makes one an extremist either. And I say that as someone who actually does have trans friends and does, in and, fact, and that's an interesting point. I want to stay with the far right for a second, but that's right? an interesting point in regard to sort of freedom of speech and and what yes. you know what people so, might say who disagree with you. But yeah, it's interesting you're standing up for them. So in terms of the far right, I would define them very clearly, and this is where my criticism of the definition is. I would have actually expanded the definition. I would have expanded upon what the extreme left is, who the Islamists are, and the parameters of Islamist ideology, as well as the parameters of the far right. Because those are the three ideologies that are posing a risk to our society. Now, in terms of the far right, I would, from what I've seen and from what the statistics say, it seems that there may be a higher level of frequency when it comes to how common the far right is. But in terms of individual severity, it doesn't reach the threshold of terrorism very often. Hence why, despite the fact the Islamists being smaller in number, they are more extreme in terms of intensity and severity mm -hmm. on an individual level. Therefore, their activity often does reach the threshold of terrorism. Hence why 95% of the caseload of MI5 is in fact focused on, yeah. on Islamism, because that's actually where the real national security threat lies. And tell me, I mean, what is far right to you? What is that? You're, you're, you've, you've said what it isn't, and I, I totally agree with you. I mean, yeah. people expressing legitimate democratic concerns about, I mean, the kind of things we talk about all the time on this uh, on this program about immigration, for example. That's not far right, of course it isn't. But I mean, we're talking about we're talking about neo Nazis here. We're talking about yes. the, the really extreme stuff, aren't we? Yes, we're talking about neo-Nazis, the extreme stuff. The reason why I'm shying away from a definition per se is because even in academia, we're not sure. <laughs> in, in academia, academics aren't sure about the definition. And, but that adds, well, right, that adds to the confusion as well, doesn't it, Sahil? That adds to the confusion as well, Sahil, doesn't it? Because yeah. because people uh, bandy around the term far too loosely, don't they? Indeed, 100% agreed. And f personally, I think it's kind of something you know when you see it, mm. and it may be difficult to philosophically define but everyone kind of knows it when they see it same with 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 any form of extremism this is where kind of trying to have a general definition of extremism where there's essentially currently three moving parts under them i think that the general definition should have been there but it should have made reference to very specific definitions of the far right the far left and of islamists uh, because those are the three areas at which that are posing a threat to our society. Mm. Now, with the extreme left or the far left, they're not a national security threat per se, although possibly um, what with what happened with Jeremy Corbyn and Labour may have been, <laughs> but um, that's my personal view. Um, but in general, um, the far, the extreme left, is a lot more insidious in that they give succor and, and support and deflect criticism from the Islamists. And that's problematic.